Monsieur le Président du Comité international olympique, Monsieur Jack Roger, Votre Altesse Royale, Président Ramos Horta, Honorable Membre du Comité international olympique, Madame la Ministre de la Culture, Madame la, Madame la Maire de Copenhague, Mesdames et Messieurs, je suis très heureux d'être parmi vous aujourd'hui. C'est un grand plaisir pour moi. C'est également un grand honneur. Je me sens chez moi parmi vous. Vous venez de tous les coins du monde. Vous représentez pour différentes nations. Et pourtant, vous avez de nombreux intérêts communs. C'est un peu comme d'être à l'ONU. Je suis ici à Copenhague pour deux raisons très importantes. Je suis ici parce que ce congrès est l'occasion idéale d'examiner les moyens de ressourcer la collaboration entre l'ONU et le mouvement olympique. Je suis aussi venu promouvoir la conférence des Nations Unies sur les changements climatiques qui se tiendra ici même en décembre. Ces deux objectifs sont liés. Le mouvement olympique contribue de plus en plus à la protection de l'environnement. La lutte contre les changements climatiques a besoin d'urgence de votre appui. Je vous dirai pourquoi dans un instant. Mr. President, distinguished IOC members, Your Royal Highness, ladies and gentlemen, let me express my profound thanks to President Jack Roge and IOC for this kind invitation to this historic IOC Congress, which is happening for the first time in 15 years. This Congress is taking place in an era where we are facing multiple challenges. I commend the dynamic leadership of President Chuck Roge to lead this IOC movement through this challenging time. I also welcome the growing cooperation between IOC and the United Nations. Just last month, the United Nations General Assembly, for the first time, took steps to pave the way for IOC representatives to participate in its official meetings. If all goes well, this could start by the end of this year. But our, <clears throat> but our partnership It goes well beyond the meeting rooms in New York. It extends across the world, from national capitals to war zones. It carries, it carries out scores of projects to help refugees, educate children, and protect our planet. These efforts are underpinned by a shared principles non-discrimination, sustainability, universality, and solidarity. Olympic principles are United Nations principles. Olympians also have tremendous capacity uh, to inspire. At the UN-run camp in Nepal, where young refugee girls were trying to play volleyball with the broken equipment, three gold medal Japanese athletes visited with professional balls and personal lessons. The girls, of course, were overjoyed. This is just one of countless such examples. My special advisor on sports for development and peace, Mr. Wilfried Lemke, has a simple uh, philosophy. He says, sport is a universal language that unites people and build bridges. Indeed, sports can be found anywhere, even in a war-ravaged places where all hopes seem lost. Suddenly, a ball appears. <clears throat> the, 
This is a ball made out of plastic bags, used newspapers, and used cloth. Suddenly, a dirty street is transformed into a playing field. We have seen this in poor townships in South Africa and slums in Nairobi. This was made by the children who are living in slums in Nairobi, where United Nations initiatives are helping children benefit from sports. In the Middle East, organized sports are helping children devastated by violence uh, to learn positive social values. Three years ago, when the United Nations helped to organize Democratic Republic of the Congo, the first election in, 19, in 45 years, the IOC teamed up with peacekeepers to hold what is, we call peace games that help promote calm and stability. I thank President Roge for backing these Sports for Peace initiatives. More and more people around the world understand the value of such efforts. That is why the vast majority of the United Nations member states sponsored the Biennial General Assembly Resolution calling for an Olympic truce. This is one of the most widely sponsored General Assembly measures, and it is always adopted unanimously. It may seem impossible to silence all the guns on this planet, but we must try. We must be as determined as Olympic champions. We must use the potential of sports to help people who are marginalized, including people with disabilities. From the Olympics to the Paralympics and the, to the Special Olympics, we hear stories of people who have fought the odds and won finally. I hope that all sports will strive to provide equal access to everyone in keeping with the landmark United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. We must also join forces to combat the negative aspects of sports. Doping, human rights abuses, violence, and corruptions. They all contradict directly the ideals of Olympic movement and the United Nations Charter. We need positive role models who reject this behavior and show children how to be true winners in life. I'm grateful to the leading Olympic athletes who have signed on as UN Goodwill Ambassadors. Our work together is especially important as the global economic crisis continues to inflict sufferings. The International Labor Organization, ILO, is working with the IOC to support job training, UNICEF, UNESCO, and the UN refugee agencies, UNHCR, are organizing sports education programs. We are also joining hands to raise awareness about HIV AIDS. Athletics are also central to our work to promote gender equality. I commend the IOC and the organizers of 2010 Youth Olympic Games in Singapore for their commitment to equal representation of male and female athletes. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a wide-ranging field of play. But there is perhaps no area where we cooperate more closely than in protecting our global environment. One of my top priorities as Secretary General of the United Nations. To push for a global climate deal, I have sounded the alarm from Antarctica to the Arctic Rim and from the dry plains of Africa and the steppe in Mongolia. Last month in New York, I convened the largest ever summit meeting on climate change. More than 100 heads of state and government participated. 
I continued to press them to hammer out an agreement. We were able to harness much needed political momentum. But we also need citizens and leaders like IOC members to do their part, to do your own part on climate and environment. The IOC's agenda for sports and environment, as President Jacques Roguet just said, is a welcome effort in the right uh, direction. The concept of green games is now a reality. That is why the UN Environment Program named President Roge as champion of the earth, and I applaud and commend your leadership. <laughs> Last summer's Beijing Olympics set new records. More than a fifth of all energy used during Olympic Games was renewable, and people everywhere learned about the importance of protecting the environment. I'm pleased that Vancouver and London next year and in 2012 are committed to greening the games that they will host. I'm also encouraged that the Russian government in preparing for 2014 Winter Olympics Games in Sochi has already responded to a recommendation from UNEP to relocate facilities away from a protected wilderness area. Yesterday, ladies and gentlemen, you chose a city to host the 2016 Olympic Games. I congratulate sincerely Rio de Janeiro for its successful beat, Parabench Rio. In a few weeks, an Olympics of another sort an Olympics of another sort will take place right here in Copenhagen. The nations of the world will gather to seal a deal on climate change. That will take an Olympian effort. We are all running a race, all running a race against the time. Last month, a summit in New York laid a solid foundation for this effort. World leaders all said they want a deal, and that they will work for it. And the summit also heard important commitments from Japan, China, European Union, and many others. I appreciate this progress and commitment, but I'm keeping up a pressure. This is the preeminent global challenges of our time, of our 21st century. Tackling climate change can set us on the road to peace and prosperity for all. But half measures, or business as usual, will set the stage for catastrophe. I will continue engaging leaders for success at the December conference. I appeal to you all to use your positions, to use your commitment and leadership and influence to do your part. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I must confess, I'm a bit old speaking before you. Many of you are athletes or former athletes, gold medalists, and all of you know more about sports than I do. If you ask me to jog around this conference hall, maybe I would probably run out of breath. But when it comes to fighting for our shared global goals for a world that is cleaner, healthier, more peaceful, more sustainable, more prosperous. I will sprint like an Olympian. I will ski the steepest, steepest trail. I will run and run and never stop until we reach the finish line. I'm counting on all of you to join me, we must go for the gold. A gold medal for all of us, a gold medal for each and every one of you. I count on your leadership. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, the President presents now a gift to the Secretary General of the United Nations. Ladies and gentlemen, and now the Secretary General offers a gift to the IOC President. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, Mr. President, for signing this poll. I have already signed this poll. Uh, this poll is going to be auctioned by Princess Haya, who is working as a United Nations Messenger of Peace, who is going to establish a fund uh, who will support the families of diseased United Nations national staff. We have so many United Nations staff international or national who are unfortunately killed during the course of their official duties. They need their help, and this ball, when it is auctioned, will be used for the benefit and well-being of those families of the deceased uh, United Nations staff. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the opening ceremony of the 30th Olympic Congress. The official party will now leave. Kindly remain in the room for a video presentation. Thank you. <laughs>